It's Saturday afternoon here in the lab. I'm working on a birthday present for my son-in-law, Josh. He's the owner of Uray Silversmiths and he's an engraver. Um, and uh, Josh is one of those kind of guys, kind of hard to find presents for. So I'm gonna make him something that only exists. Well, it's going to exist out of this box here and a bunch of parts that I have here in the lab. As an engraver, a lot of times he'll be engraving um, rings or bracelets or something like that. And he uses this thing called a, I think this is a jeweler's block. So this little ball sits on his desk and he puts his workpiece in these clamps. And you can see in here there's a threaded um, shaft and then you turn this screw on the end and it these jaws come in and out. So if he were to want to make something... Um, you know, as he engraves, he can kind of spin this thing. It's got a really nice feature on here for uh, likes bearing. This is very solid. Uh, doesn't have any indication of angle, though. So if we wanted to put in, like, uh, you know, something every 10 degrees or every 36 degrees or how many steps, it wouldn't be very accurate. So let's see if we can do better than that. I bought this little box over at Habitat um, for Humanity. And uh, I got some parts up here, have a, a NEMA 17 stepper motor. It's 200 steps per rotation, so that works out to be 1.8 degrees. I have a little push button switch here. I have one of those B12 uh, drill trucks with an adapter for a five millimeter um, shaft. I have a Pro Mini Arduino board, the ubiquitous Schmalls house, easy driver, potentiometer with a knot with a uh, with a knob on it, and a Nokia fifty one ten uh, graphical display. What I'm going to do on this thing is let me take this off of here. So I'm going to take that stepper motor and I'm going to mount it on the inside so that the the drill truck comes out the back. It'll be sitting back here, coming out the back. So the operator will be working from this angle here. They'll rest their hands here, and then, the, then their workpiece will be back here, rotating in this direction here. So what's going to happen is you're going to turn on the turn on the display, set the angle you want. These buttons here will be the user interface, so it'll, you know, maybe clockwise, counterclockwise, maybe reset or something like that. I don't quite know how the software is going to work yet. But basically, you'll come in and set up what your angle is going to be per step, per rotation. Uh, well, per, you know, you press a button and it's going to go that certain distance. And you're going to have your hand back here. So one hand is going to be ticking off your workpiece. The other one will be working the buttons. We have this nice big work surface here to do it on. Um, that's today's project. This is definitely something that uh, I think he's going to get a lot of use out of. Uh, and uh, I think it's going to be a good birthday present. The top of the enclosure was really very thin, probably uh, eighth inch material. So instead of cutting pilot holes and sawing it out, I just use a sharp exacto knife. Marked my uh, hole cut out for the display and then just scored it probably around five times per line, making sure that I didn't go beyond the corners. And I popped it out. This uh, Nokia display has a through hole connector on it and those parts that protrude through the through the board are going to make it so it doesn't sit flat on the enclosure so I pulled out this connector then I just top soldered the the uh, signal wires going over that and made sure I didn't have solder on that, that side of the board on the display side of the board. This display has some surface mount components on this side of the board, which make it also not sit flat. So I had to notch out 
a little tiny uh, box for that uh, bio. Now it sits perfectly flat in there. When you turn it over, it comes right through and it uh, actually sits flat with the bezel. Here's the mounting location for the potentiometer. Just put a hole through there. It turns out this drill bit that I have for my little handheld drill goes in and the uh, countersink bit is the exact diameter to fit that potentiometer shaft. So I just kept going because the top of the box is very thin material. And it was the perfect diameter for this just to happen to fit through there. I had a reader comment, he said that I should use this drill and show it in action. I did a review of it, maybe sometime in the last. This thing is great for this type of work. I have one of these drill bits for the connection on it. And it works really nice on this. Super sharp, really easy to handle. I, where here I am, I'm drilling out the... Uh, stepper motor screw mounts. That drill bit has a tapered shaft so I came in kind of on the back side and took out a little bit of the, the uh, evened up the diameter on the front and back side so the screw would fit all the way through. larger hole for the um, adapter that goes between the stepper motor and that B12 chuck. So here I am using this little tiny handheld drill with a um, with a step drill and the largest um, step on this step drill was the diameter that I wanted. Well, my engraver's tool is looking pretty good. I have things kind of pressure fit into place. Here's that display square that I cut out, and then I cut out a square for these buttons right here. And then I have this um, stepper motor mounter with a chuck on the back. So everything's kind of just sitting in there. I'll just to hot glue it in when I get done. And over here on this side, if you can see this, I had to put a little some spacers in there, set the motor off, but that's all worked out fine. So I'll just mount the, uh, the Arduino Mini in here and the uh, Easy Driver, write a little piece of code, and we will be done. Well, I have everything connected here. Uh, here's the stepper motor. It's mounted up here. Here's the big Easy. The, this one is the Easy Driver. Here's the Nokia display, uh, the uh, Arduino Mini. My three button um, interface, I have a potentiometer here, and then I have a programming board. This, this Arduino um, Pro Mini doesn't have a serial port on it, so I had to add in a USB to serial connection. And I have it plugged into a 12-volt um, a wall wart. And, I ha and uh, I've got that running into the Easy Driver. Now, the Easy Driver has a... Uh, uh, voltage uh, regulator on it that kicks out 5 volts or 3.3 so uh, Brian uh, Brian Schmall is the guy who designed this put a solder jumper on here so it'll kick out either of those so I have put the solder jumper in I'm running this this uh, board on 3.3 volts because the display is a 3.3 volts display so everything is wired up and um, it's all functional there's a lot of wires running into this this mini here. If I burn this out, I'm going to be kind of screwed because I have to unsolder all that crap and put it back on again. So I was very careful doing that. So I'm going to plug it in here. The first thing, and then I wrote a little bit of code to exercise all the hardware. 
So I have a banner screen here. It shows the firmware version. And then on the display here, uh, I took some code and um, actually modified the font table. So I have like five different fonts that I can use. This is like a 24-bit, a 24 um, font size for times. And then here's a smaller one over here, and then this one's a mono 7. What this is just showing you is that I have a counter in there, um, just counting up to show you that this is actually doing something. And I have these buttons set up so that if you press this button, the motor is going to rotate to the one direction. And if you press this one, it rotates to the, the other direction. Now also on the display, it's just, it's, um, oh, it's stepping the amount of what's coming out of the analog read off of the potentiometer. So you can see that it, it goes almost all the way around the default setting for the the easy driver is um, with micro steps on at uh, division by eight so this is a 200 step per rotation motor so i got to go 1600 steps so i have to scale this right but right now it's going 1023 steps so you can see that it goes almost all the way around if i turn the potentiometer down to something smaller you'll see that it it just goes a little bit Now this number here is showing you the steps. This one's just a counter. Eventually it's going to show you, you know, some, I'll have an interface on here that's actually functional. The last thing I set up was the motor is actually dry. The, the stepper motors, um, um, driving the motor now. So it's, it's very hard to turn it. Uh, there's an there's a extra enable line that comes off the easy driver that I'm running into one of the I.O. pins. So if I press this middle button, so I can't really turn it now. I can turn it, but I don't want to do that. If I press the middle button down, it disables the output of the mini of the uh, easy driver, and then I can spin this real easily. Then once you let go of it, it goes back, and I also zero this counter out when I'm when you're doing it. So typically, I think. The common thing was you get your uh, work thing positioned while this button is down. Then you let go of it, and the motor driver will ena en enable. You set your degrees with the potentiometer, and then you step a certain amount of steps. So I'll get all this stuff straightened out before I um, give it to him. But it's working pretty well. Here's the engraver spindle that I've been working on. I uh, finished it up this afternoon. You can see that uh, we have the three buttons, the display, the knob, the motor's mounted. And uh, my wife and I went to Home Depot and we got these decorative corners. Josh being the engraver, we'll go ahead and finish off these nice corners here. And I'll show you what I did on the inside. Just made a little slidey back for it. I just hot glued everything in so you can see that there's the NEMA stepper motor. It's NEMA 17, the three buttons along the bottom. The easy driver is in the middle at the top. There's an uh, Arduino Nano in one of those Nokia 5150 displays and a potentiometer. I just hot glued them in there. It was very easy. So go ahead and power this up. Focusing on the display here. This is called the Alfano spindle. Sam Alfano is one of the master engravers of the world. Just look him up on the net and you'll see some of his master works. So the way that this works is this goes forward, this goes back, and this is a control button to set how many divisions you're going to have per rotation. So over here on the display, this num bottom number is the number of divisions per rotation. 
and these top two numbers are which step you're on and how many steps you have to go. So I'll go ahead and press this button and you'll see. So we moved one step. There's two, three, and we're back to where we are. Now, <clears throat> the middle button, in addition to setting um, this button here, this potentiometer doesn't do anything unless you're holding down the, um, the control button. This, see, I've already changed it there. So now I'm on 11. It also uh, disengages the uh, motor driver. So you can actually set your machine zero, so to speak. Then it engages it when you let go of it. And it resets the counter. So now I'm back on 11. And I'm back to where I was. If you go backwards, it counts backwards, but it, the steps to go still count backwards as well. So now I'm back to my home. One additional thing I added into this was if you press and hold the button down, it free rotates in that direction. It also keeps tabs of where it is so that these counts are still accurate. Both directions work that way. So this is the Alfano engraver spindle. We're going to go ahead and box it up and give it to Josh at his birthday party. Thanks for watching. I'm just joking. <laughs> 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 this is funny. <laughs> you gotta cover our box. Yeah, <laughs> Quantity PC. Well, good thing you have your knife. Oh, what happened to your fancy knife? Like I like felt like we're all pieces. I, I, joined, I joined a Spyderco appreciation group and now I have more love for my Spyderco. Oh, okay. you really appreciate it. We invented it. Is this something I can use with uh, me and Sheena together? It's a tool. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it would do what you think it would do. Uh. Oh, I like the decorative corner pieces. There. Well, I didn't get a chance to finish now what I wanted to do. But I hope I still can. Well, thanks, guys. Well, let, let, <laughs> let Greg explain to you what it is. <laughs> It's like an index to your start point. Oh. I don't think there is a zero. There's yeah, a it, it, I wonder if there's some way I could use this to sharpen your